So I think this is a good transition. So the topic of this conversation is, is context for conversational commerce, which we've subtitled as how AI supports IA. And I think we just had a, a great example of, of sort of a, an implementation that starts with a knowledge base that the, that the company has and um, sort of responds accordingly within the context of what people are asking. And now we'll go into sort of a more deeper dive. And I'd like um, the panelists to introduce themselves and then um, we'll, we'll get right down to it. Great. Uh, my name is Mark Hansen. I lead the Cognitive Innovation Group worldwide for Nuance Communications. Uh, the Cognitive Innovation Group, or SIG as it's abbreviated, is responsible for applying the latest uh, in artificial intelligence machine learning technologies to the challenges and opportunities faced in the contact center. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name's Sam Boyle. I'm the general manager for Inventa in the UK. Um, Inventa is the company with whom Ticketbiz partnered in the case study you just saw. Very interesting, Andrea, thank you. Um, and uh, yes, we specialize in natural language search, uh, artificial intelligence uh, for business. Um, we are a Spanish company, but going through a very interesting time, particularly at this moment, and we are, uh, we are expanding into new markets. And um, yeah, it's a very interesting time, and um, I, I hope you are, will enjoy the conversation. And Mark, I, I don't know if you were here for some of the earlier presentations, but um, a bunch of things that have, have come up, or, or both, well, I think both of you have been here, but um, uh, some of what's come up has to do with um, just what, what is enabled these days that, that weren't in the past. You know, that, so there's this question of um, you know, what the balance, well, this came up in, in the ticket biz presentation, what the balance of, um, tasks that the automated entity can do uh, versus when you turn to uh, live agents and how that might be changing. Um, what, have, what have you been seeing lately? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, uh, you know, a long time we focused on automation uh, and, and automation is, is great in the uh, ROI that it generates, but um, in many ways our objective at first is to figure out what are the most valuable ways in which to use automation. Um, so you get these high runner use cases. If you're a bank, you know, everybody's trying to pay a bill or check their balance or something like that. Um, so it's, it's important to develop a, a curated experience around uh, those intents that may make up you know, the majority of the uh, frequency distribution of, of, of interactions that you're having with your customers. But then you're right, it, you know, there quickly then becomes this very, very long tail um, in which uh, customers are asking questions. And you know, it's very important, and we've found a couple things to be true. The first is that enterprises actually don't have a big data problem, they have a small data problem. And what I mean by that is that uh, you know, when we look at machine learning, machine learning is predicated, artificial intelligence is predicated on having training data uh, so that these systems can learn autonomously or in some you know, semi-supervised way. Uh, on the internet, we now you know, look at some remarkable inventions like the ability to do image recognition. So we have uh, you know, Google going off and doing things like recognizing cats on YouTube. Well, it turns out that while very impressive, there are actually m tens or hundreds of millions of pictures of cats on the internet labeled cat or pictures of Justin Bieber labeled Justin Bieber. And, and image recognition can use that as training data. Inside the enterprise though, um, when you talk about this long tail, right? So you get into these, the, the, the end of the distribution, which is really where you want to automate because while it is in the long tail, it, it is quite frequent. Each individual intent or question that a, a person might ask might only happen maybe 100,000 times, a million times a year. And that's actually quite infrequent with regard to the amount of data it would need to, to train a, a deep neural net, for example. So um, we think about automation uh, we think about having, to get back to your, your original question, <laughs> we think about having the right type of artificial intelligence that can learn on, on sparse data, and then also being able to learn from humans. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at, at Nuance, what we're doing is uh, we've introduced uh, a new uh, product that we're, that we're coming to market with soon, uh, and is now available through our definitional customer program that actually leverages humans 
and uh, the interactions humans have with people and learns from those. So if, if you were to say, um, you know, Mark, you need to go in and, and uh, learn how to be an airline uh, call center agent, the first thing I would do is kind of Y cord into uh, a, a conversation and stand over the shoulder of an agent and listen to the conversation that's happening and watch the things that agents do when they're performing the, the, the tasks that, that are happening in that conversation. Um, and that's, we've taken that model and, and applied machine learning and AI to do exactly the same thing, which is uh, essentially learn by standing over the shoulder of the agent, listening to the conversation that's happening between uh, the, the agent and the customer, watching the actions that are performed by the agent, the answers that are expressed by that agent, and using machine learning to then, uh, in a, in, in a, in a semi-supervised way, uh, use that as structured data for, for machine learning so that we can continue automation without having to be explicit in, in teaching it. Interesting. And then Sam, uh, you know, looking at, at TicketBiz, it, it, it seemed like the, the corpus of data that was being looked at was uh, essentially the FAQs on the website and that the intelligence would be used um, within the, the you know, to, to understand what somebody's saying to, in order to present them with the most relevant um, response? Well, I think from my perspective, there are two very important things to, to really nail in order to deliver uh, a comprehensive customer service, to deliver the best possible customer experience. And I think the first one is a really well-ordered and well-defined knowledge base. So in the case of uh, TicketBiz, that would involve understanding their workflow, understanding their, uh, their users' expectations and requirements, and understanding what TicketBiz want to achieve. And then um, also applying Inventor's own expertise uh, within relevant verticals. And I think the second aspect to, uh, to, really, to really get right is uh, the application of uh, natural language processing, so which means that we can take these user queries which might be posed, which a user query which, for example, might kind of revolve around the same topic. You know, uh, I've, I didn't receive my email confirmation or uh, did my order get confirmed, but these questions which can be asked in sort of 5, 10, 15 different ways. Using those, using natural language and using the knowledge base, combining them together to, to create a really impressive user experience, which also has the benefit of uh, relieving your agents of dealing with the, uh, those kind of repetitive queries again and again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was a, a really interesting comment, actually, something that I had not considered before, um, that, it's, that it's a great benefit to the agents themselves in your contact centers if they don't actually have to go through this mind-numbing uh, questions again and again, day after day, so they're actually more stimulated and they give a, a better, more, more passionate response to your users, so everybody wins. And I would have to agree, it's, it's a great point that, that he's making, which is you know, having a, uh, a strong you know, knowledge base is a great way to bootstrap a virtual assistant so we can you know index the knowledge base and actually use that as, as training data so you don't have to manually create uh, a, a knowledge repository for a virtual assistant or associate questions and answers mm -hmm. one of the challenges though that we have found as we work particularly with large enterprise organizations is that the answer actually isn't in the knowledge base um, you know what what agents are doing um, and we, have, we originally had the thesis of, great, we, can, you know, we have this technology where we can index knowledge and you know, take in large corpuses of textual data, we're, we're set, and, and that quickly became uh, a false realization. Because what agents are often doing is they're going off to one knowledge repository and looking at a piece of information there. They're going off to another knowledge repository or system of record, looking at a piece of in information there, transforming that into an answer, and then relaying that answer back to the customer the opportunity and, and, and you know, where, where the market needs to head is that you need to capture that. You need to capture that answer that's being created um, because the actual manual uh, 
you know, curation and constant maintenance of a frequently asked questions or, or knowledge base becomes an untenable task. I mean, I think everybody knows the frustration if you've tried to implement an enterprise knowledge base of just keeping it maintained can be a full-time job for a full team. Uh, when in fact, your agents are doing that every day. They're adding knowledge to the enterprise. It's just not being captured. So, you know, how do you take all of the information that's being relayed to your customers through some of your most intelligent uh, assistants, the live agents, in your contact center, and retain that knowledge that, that they are um, creating every day? So, so, with, so the image I'm getting now is that uh, there, there's a long tail uh, that you were addressing in, in with, with your comment on sort of using art of the, the wisdom of, of your best agents, there's the, um, the head of the long tail, if, you know, whatever that's called, <laughs> where um, when you look at, say, the TicketBiz application, if, if you know that 80% of the calls have to do with X amount and that in, within the FAQs that exist and the knowledge base that exists, you can answer that. I'll, I'll tell you what struck me about the presentation is that um, there was a discovery that um, just using that <laughs> and moving it over to an intelligent assistant, um, the use of a transfers over to agents to answer the question went down dramatically, which, mm -hmm. which meant two things, that, that there was a lot of inf good information already in the knowledge base that fed the FAQs, and that it, there's a preference of individuals to have it handled in an automated way. And, and then where that goes is that there will be some stuff that falls out that then you learn about and you could start thinking about automating that in a in a in a rational way. Am I am I on target here or that that's that's a um almost yeah that that's a quite accurate summation of, of how we like to look at things. We we try and get the performance up to as high as possible. So as I mentioned by understanding the business and preparing the knowledge base. But of course there are things that uh, fall outside of what we've pre-prepared, but it's all about feeding them back into the system. Uh, and then using that information to improve performance as much as possible. Of course, we're not going to get everything. I don't, you know, we're, we're not at that stage yet where every single thing can be automated. Um, but uh, we, we, I think we can do, we can do quite well. We're experiencing some, some very uh, high rates of performance and it's, uh, it's, um, it's a really impressive uh, technology. And then, the is the next shoe to drop that it, that it does indeed get more sophisticated and, and that um, um, I'm just want you know, how, M Mark, do you, um, in <laughs> when the questions aren't there, yeah. Uh, when, the, when the questions aren't there and the answers aren't there, there's a certain amount of stuff that goes on in the fly. Is, is that sort of the next unexplored? Well, yeah, we are currently exploring that and, and, and are implementing that with a customer right now. But essentially, it's a machine learning capability that is able to understand uh, when, you know, so you've seen, uh, you know, cutting edge virtual assistants. I think uh, Svedbank and USA are, are great implementations of, of, of nuances. New, uh, interactive natural assistant, um, you know, going and pushing that boundary even further, what happens when that virtual assistant can't answer the question, mm -hmm. right? It does get, you know, escalated to a human. Now you have a question you've never heard before and an answer you've never seen before, right? How do we leverage machine learning to create the association between those two things so you don't need to continually manually update uh, a knowledge base or a set of frequently asked questions, but the machine learning algorithm can actually create those associations for you as it listens to conversations in the contact center in real time. And then, if you would like, you know, provide you a, a governance panel so that if you're in a regulated environment or want to really uh, maintain control of that experience, you can say, oh, yes, that's right, you've learned that, you've learned that, you've learned that. Uh, and these are all the right things. So we don't have a, I think we've seen some examples of AI gone rogue recently, uh, <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. Um, but that's exactly right. And, and I think, you know, in, in, in a narrow domain, 
it might not be that important, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if you're just doing, if you know, one section of your business, a small section of your business, starting, you can get a long way, you know, bootstrapping a virtual assistant with a, with a knowledge base and frequently asked questions and curating uh, what you think are the preponderance of the intents that, uh, that callers or users are going to uh, have these questions that they're gonna have. But as you start to get into you know, enterprise grade uh, problems where you've got multiple lines of business, you've got, you know, think about a bank or think about an airline or a telco, uh, many different products, many mm -hmm. different types of solutions, uh, you know, the, the, the knowledge uh, really needs to be something that happens in an in a autonomous or semi-supervised way because uh, it's just intractable in, in, in trying to, to wrangle and manage that. <coughs> And I keep thinking of Darius's throwdown this morning. I don't, I don't know if you were here to hear Darius from USAA talk about um, a couple things. One is that, that people sometimes prefer um, to be interacting with what they know to be an automated assistant mm -hmm. when there's um, unspeakable things or, or you know, they say, collections. Yeah, <laughs> well, collections, we've known that for a long time. Um, and the other is that the questions get kind of complex. So, you know, um, his example was, you know, when can I retire? <laughs> yeah, right. And, and um, you know, does, does, when I think of AI for IA, you know, the idea that, okay, I as, the, I, I as the end user or the customer am under control, I have chosen to interact with this automated thing mm -hmm. uh, as a preference. And, and, you know, some of the precursors he mentioned are, are you know, these smart portfolios. You know, mm -hmm. I am basically trusting the algorithm. I, I can describe myself and my desires uh, or my needs in my own words, and then this intelligence sort of says, "I need something. You know, I need to know. You know, his portfolio value, his mm -hmm. this, is that. Um, is is that just around? Is, is that attainable or just around the corner? A pipe dream? Uh, I, I think it's it's close. I, I think that you know we're seeing solutions now, um, particularly in the startup community, that are that are getting close. I, it, it, the challenge is that you need um, you know, domain expertise. You go to a financial advisor, that financial advisor has a, a strong domain expertise in one particular area. Um, and uh, generalized AI solutions are not going to work very well in, in that particular uh, circumstance. You really do need to train that solution in that particular domain expertise. And so it's not just a matter of natural language generation or natural language processing. It's understanding all of the inherent implied business rules that, that make up uh, that particular domain so that you can provide accurate and, and, and tangible and relatable advice. Yeah. And Sam, would you, would you see where, you know, a company like TicketBiz, uh, well, there are a couple questions that came up, but, but um, you know, it seemed like the person was pretty far down along knowing that they wanted to buy a particular ticket to a particular concert and, and they could, in an automated way, be pointed in the right direction or they might have a specific thing. But, but can the fundamental technology in your point of view say, hey, you know, it's Wednesday night and I got free time at six, would, would they be able to, you know, overlay the ticket bis capability with something as... And take it a step, take it a step further? Yeah. Uh, I think that was one of the questions from a from, uh, young lady in the audience at the end. I, um, yeah. I think that that is most certainly the, the next step. Um, it's something that we're, we've implemented in a couple of projects uh, already. Um, it depend, it's, it's an interesting point because uh, it depends on the level of collaboration with, uh, with the customer and the, and the um, provider of the intelligent agent. So for example, in many cases, and this has been around for a couple of years now, the information being handled by the virtual assistant is all public information. Okay. So it's all available yeah. on, on the sort of public website. When you start talking about more intelligent, really intelligent assistance, and we're talking about personal information, purchasing history, uh, possible purchasing preferences, then you start to talk about, you, you start to encounter perhaps data protection mm -hmm. issues. You have, uh, you have um, things to think about integrating with uh, CRMs. So it's certainly interesting, and I definitely think that's the next step. I definitely think that's where, that's where we're headed, um, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Not only as a provider, but as a consumer as well. Right. I think I think it would be I think it would be great to have that level of reactivity. Um, so yeah, it will be. It's going to be. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. 
Do we have questions from the audience? Wow. <laughs> yes. Talk really loud because I have the mic up here. <laughs> we can hear you. No, we'll re okay, we'll repeat the question. And, and I'll repeat this. So, so this is the ultimate take question. And, and this is like, how far do you want to go with unsupervised uh, artificial intelligence uh, deciding how to answer a question and then subject it to the sort of gaming we saw mm -hmm. with Tay? Um, well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not in R&D. I'm not in the, the cognitive research side of things. So I'm coming at it from a commercial side. I will share with you a recent experience um, from one of our customers, uh, a bank. Uh, we've been in business with them for a couple of years now, and we've deployed uh, um, a virtual assistant for, for both uh, public, the public website and uh, an internal employee portal. Okay, And it's uh, uh, work, working very nicely, for, as I said, for a couple of years. They were recently approached by a, uh, a worldwide brand whose name I won't mention, but who have been touting uh, a, uh, an intelligent virtual assistant to sort of automate the entire process. And they proposed to them to not only uh, mimic what we are already doing, but sort of automa autom automatize everything and, you know, we'll sort of, um, we'll uh, allow your customers to, to pay their bills, we'll provide them with bank statements, you know, everything. So, of course, our customer uh, agreed because they were proposing a free prototype, so our, our customer said, yes, of course, we'll take a look. And uh, I think nine months after they began building the prototype, they scrapped the whole thing because it, it simply was, was not feasible. The, um, they promised uh, initial delivery after six months and then after, after um, several delays, our customer cancelled the whole thing and came to us in a kind of confessional manner, almost, because they had to say, well, look, we, we took a look at, at what one of your competitors is offering, and it turns out that machine learning is, is not quite there yet. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that story, and I think I knew who, who that might be, and they a competitor of ours as well, and we get invited back uh, in, in very similar circumstances. I think the answer to your question is that you definitely want to have governance and supervision uh, over the learning. Um, I think that uh, one of the requirements, which is not, um, you know, when you're thinking about a machine learning or any type of virtual assistant solution, it's very important, particularly if you're in a regulated environment, to have backward traceability and accountability to the system. So the system has to be able to give you a report as to why it made this decision. Why did I give this person this answer? Why did I give this person this offer? Um, and. Uh, you know, there are certain machine learning technologies which just don't, which are very popular, and, and there are companies, large companies, touting the benefits, and I think they do have benefits. But you know, certain machine learning to technologies, which are very popular, like deep neural networks, don't lend themselves well to that type of, of use case. Right? Uh, DNNs are, and CNNs are very much a, a black box in that way. So you have to make sure that not only are you utilizing the latest and greatest in machine learning, but it's the type of machine learning that's actually going to fit the requirements of your industry and, and what you're looking for. And, and super, supervision, governance, traceability, uh, accountability is, is very much important. For the automated entity. And I would point out that the, the same <coughs> uh, technological foundation that, that ran Tay for its 18-hour <laughs> adventure had been operating in China for three years without people going to the trouble to to um, to pervert it. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I think you can put constraints around it, and and that the fundamental question. I mean, I just think it's remarkable that we're asking the question of you know, do you release artificial intel? You know, release understanding machine learning 
and sort of the feedback uh, without supervision, um, it was almost not thinkable to do that yeah. uh, until just recently. I mean, I, I, you know, so that's progress that you would, you would even ask, should we try? Yeah, that it's being discussed is, is yeah. an interesting sign. But, okay. yeah. Yes. I, I got to say, I, I went to the airport and I was very pleased that there was a self-service kiosk there. Um, and, and it's experiences like that where we're finding that self-service and automation is actually preferred by customers. I think Darius spoke to that this, this right. morning. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think that automation is at odds with customer experience. I think that you can deliver an automated customer experience and, and, and automate at the same time. Now, if, if the question is regarding artificial intelligence, um, you know, artificial intelligence is a spectrum, right? So this, the solutions that you've seen today from Swedbank and, and the ones that discussed by USA, they leverage artificial intelligence, natural language processing as a form of AI, speech recognition as a form of AI. Um, it, it, it really is in how you, how you use it, and, and that's by design. Sorry, I, I didn't make myself clear. Automation has been a dramatic success. That's why we go to ATMs, yeah. Yeah, and every other iteration of making things easy. Uh, my question was about the control of it and taking human supervision out of it. Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, no, I, I, no, I yeah. apologize. On, uh, yeah. that, is, that is my fault. Uh, no, I have to absolutely agree that human supervision uh, is going to maintain uh, to be important. You know, when we develop systems today, um, we curate that experience, right? That, that we're leveraging uh, artificial intelligence, but curating the experience. Uh, even as artificial intelligence is able to learn on its own, it's important to have that governance capability because um, ultimately you do need to, as you would train any human, you need to train uh, AI to be the best customer representative it can possibly be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if everybody could, could hear um, Mark there, but, but he's basically saying that, so we, we've created a couple new roles for humans in sort of a, a largely automated uh, context. So their curation is, remains very important. Um, train, you know, being the source of the training material. I mean, I don't think that ever really goes away. And, and that we've seen some improvements coming um, well, this, you know, I'll, I'll just sort of reiterate what I've heard today is, is um, the power of automation, you, you build the business case based on some, using automation to hit certain objectives that, that improve performance and financial and move to the bottom line, but then that sort of subsidizes the advances you'll make in terms of bringing uh, intelligence into other spheres and, and, and you know we've seen pitches from a number of the vendors that say okay we 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 have increased automation rates lowered your cost and increased um, customer satisfaction that we we have seen that um, and then how you click in supervision and learning I think we're sorting that out so that's a moving target that that's very dynamic and it'll be fun to discuss as, as we um, move forward. Yeah, and I, I think it'll also be use case dependent. I think there, there may be instances where you want a high degree of supervision, 
over the learning. You know, learning is, is great and it does reduce a significant amount of the effort, in fact, most of the effort. Um, in some instances, though, you may want less and, and you can parameterize the responses rather than su fully supervise the responses. Parameterize. Yes, so they're, they're, like they're, they're within boundaries rather than. Well, you got to use bad English. Didn't <laughs> you? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I do, and, and it is not static. Uh, yeah. Learning is continuous, that is for sure, and, and, and real time as well. Um, so, you know, what, what may be true today may not be true tomorrow. Uh, we saw uh, an increase in uh, call abandonment and a huge spike in, in call center activity. Within one day, there was, a, I think, a 20% increase uh, in, tel in a telco uh, in, in uh, call center activity. And it was related to the release of a product that another company had come out, a product that another company had come out with, right, that this, this telco supported. Um, you need to be able to learn in real time as those events happen um, so that you can uh, respond in an automated and scalable way. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying. It's going to be out of our control. No. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks, you guys. This was a Thank great you. conversation. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much.